Welcome to TOD Talk. In this vlog, we will be talking about what is your career brand by architect Joanne De Leon Tabinas, UAP Singapore past president and chairman of the Asia Pacific Council for Architects Working Abroad. All right, so good evening, everybody. Good evening. Are we all learning? Yes. I do believe that most of us came from the office. Am I right? Right. Can I see the chart of hands who came from the office? Straight from the office, then come here. You still have energy to listen and to learn, I do believe. Yes. So will you please congratulate each one of you that you are here, and we are all ready to learn. Please congratulate us. Yeah, and congratulations from being here and thank you as well for inviting me to come here and to present a sort of theory about what is really the career branding. Have you heard about it by the way? No. Not yet? Okay. We are all um, mesmerized by professional branding or no, no, not professional but personal branding. But how about your career brand? How are you going to take care of your careers? If you're already in a situation, yes, I know, especially on our age, that I know I am really an architect. I am really a designer. I am into marketing. But how can I take care of it? That's a big thing. You already know yourself. You already know your brand. You already know how to do things in your career. But how are you going to take care of it? How are you going to shape yourself into something new? How are you going to make yourself more visible, more unique, especially for those belongs to our age? Am I right? Who's experiencing it right now that you are already asking yourself, am I still capable to do things? Then yeah. my company still needed me. Do I still have the guts to learn more? Who's experiencing that? Mary. I myself, I am experiencing it. But that's the reason why I am here tonight, because it is not just, I'm going to express the, the journey of being in that position and how I got off from that bed. Okay, now, good evening again, and welcome to Career Branding. Career branding is what you can bring on the table. What is that? What is that for your employer? Is there anything to do more? Or may I say, I'm already this. So I have here 10 strategies and approach on how you shape or manage your career brand. I am the architect of that. Yeah, I am the candidate of that one. That's my copyright, okay? The trend strategies of approach to how to reshape or shape or manage your career brand. But before I begin, what is really my reason why I am, I am pushing this? I am, not, I am not a psychologist, I am not a psychiatrist, but I am a person who wants to connect the dots of yourself and of your brand. So first, who am I? I am an architect by profession and I am practicing architect. So I graduated, um, I, I just finished my master's at NUS taking the um, integrated sustainable design. So those are the professional affiliation that I am involved into. I am very much active in the United Architects of the Philippines. I am handling the chairmanship of Asia Pacific Council and the architects working abroad of Asia Pacific and immediate past president of Singapore chapter. So I am also a member of AIA and then the ERA, which is for the planning and um, settlement housing. And then what are the companies that I am affiliated? I am the founder of CORE, 
wherein that is the company of resilient environmental experts. I am also managing the Kingly Design International, PTELTD, so the main branch is here, and we have the manpower as well in different countries in Asia. And then I am also a sustainable director of the Green in Future. But in short, I am a mom of two, and I am a wife, and that is my real profession. Actually, my kids are there, and they are very much willing to learn about what we are, what we want to discuss. They are very much eager. Okay, now let's proceed. Career. We all have careers, am I right? We all do have that. So I don't need to explain or to discuss about your personal um, brand. Because when, you're, when you already have your career, meaning to say you're into it, you already know what is your brand. You already know what is your profession. For 17 years, 10 years, 5 years of being an architect, you already know what you want. But what is career brand? What is that in you? What is that? How do you define your brand as an architect? How do you define your uniqueness as an architect? As an architect, as an interior designer, or our partners in the industry? How, when you stand out in the middle of the crowd, how people look at notice you? Are you able to reflect that? Do you see the picture of a kitten, but in the mirror, it's a reflection of a lion? Have you seen that? A kitten looking at the mirror, but in, a, in the reflection, the kitten is a lion. So who are you? Are you the kitten? Or are you the roaring lion? So career brand is all about your image. It's all about your reputation in your profession. It's all about what you do. What is your distinctive characteristic? in life, in your profession, or in short, that is the essence of who you are today. Who are you? Can you ask yourself now, who am I? After gathering of 15 years in architecture or in interior design or in other allied professions, who am I? What did I able to put on the table of my profession? Now the big question there tonight is how can you able to shape and manage your career brand? Yes, that is you. That is you, the red ball in the middle, where in right now at this point in time, I want you to realize where you stand tonight and how valuable that person sitting there in that chair, in that chair, meaning to say it's you how valuable you are in your company, say in your profession, or even in your family. How are you? Have you asked yourself? First thing to know, I said that I have only 10 strategic approach. So first thing to know is, you need to know who are you? What is your DNA? Do you still know yourself? So if you're not aware that you are you today, so I think you need to have a revamp, research, research about yourself that you can develop a sense of current brand today. Because right now, for being so complacent of what is happening, and you're being complacent of your job that you're earning a sort of like this in each month, and I am comfortable. We already have food at the table. I can send my kids in school and they can do whatever they want. I'm comfortable and you're complacent. I'm so sorry. If you're that kind of person, I won't say congratulations. But I would say, you're dying. Dying why? 
Because you're not excited at all. Because you don't know that every day in your life you need to be excited to get out of the bed because you want to do what you want to do or you are doing what you love to do. That makes you a better person. That makes your professional sensible. But if you will just get up in the morning from your bed because you just are the pilot, meaning to say, well, you're dying. This second step, I think, is you need to discover how to do your SWOT analysis. Anyone knows what is a SWOT analysis? Aside from you are already reading it on the, on the screen. SWOT analysis is not common to all of us. And that is true. SWOT analysis meaning to say you are talking or you are having a conversation in yourself, and you're checking, am I still okay? Am I still okay? Do I still know my strength? Do I still know my weaknesses? Do I can consider that's an opportunity, or I can still see that as a threat? And that's okay. That's merely okay to ask yourself or to check yourself. Sometimes it is better if you put it on paper. Check yourself. What is your S? What is your strength? What are your strengths? You don't know anymore, so maybe when you go back home, please get a piece of paper. Just write SWAT. S for strength, W for weaknesses, O for your opportunity, because those opportunities, you never know that it's already in front of you. But still, you are not discovering it. Why? Because your life is autopilot. You're blinded. You only know when you get up in the morning, you need to go to office. You need to, you need to comply, and at the end of the month, you need to get your salary. So the opportunities around you, you don't have the time to think about that that one is an opportunity for you. But rather, you claim it as your threat. Why? Why threat? Because for you, that's already an obstacle. It's an itch. You're not used to it. So instead of thinking that that's an opportunity, you put it as your threat. So please, do this as a favor for yourself. Check it. Tap yourself. I need to do this SWOT analysis for myself. I need to rediscover what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And what else are the opportunities that I haven't seen because I am busy every day looking at the other things, and because my life is already autopilot. And then, of course, don't you ever forget to check what are the threats. Because those threats will help you to regain more opportunity. Number three, do not be too nice to yourself. It's not that be, being not nice to yourself is you're already regretting everything into your life. No! You need to challenge yourself, that's what I meant. Stretch yourself like a rubber band. Limitless. You know what? Sometimes when you break, that's the only time that you realize that you have that DNA in you, that you can be healed and be a better person, a stronger rubber. Stretch yourself. This one is quite long, but you need to look at the four chambers that I will gonna show you. If you want to shape or manage your career brand, get out from your comfort zone, check your self-respect and self-worth. Package yourself, your personal development. What are those four chambers in personal development? First, we have your physical. You need to take care of your body. You need to eat the right food. You need to exercise. You need to be healthy. Hello. It's not for you alone. Those who have your families, it's not for you alone. We are living and living every day and breathing, not because for yourself, but 
for your family. So you need to take care. You need to have a positive image. Your body should have a positive body language, especially when you are outside. Can't deny the fact that, of course, we do have a lot of challenges that, you know, there's a time that you really can hide your frustration. But of course, if you're into public, you need to have a positive image. It's not that being plastic, but you're being professional. Do you believe in that? You're being professional. Number two, emotional. So what are those? You should have, under emotional, you should have number one, self-confidence. The moment that your boss will gonna call you and he wants you to lead something or present something, don't say, no, 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 I can do that, I'm sorry. You should always be ready in the battle, in front of the battlefield. You should always have that bullet and ready to catch that bullet. And that is being, you're ready and self, and, and you are confident in what the things that you are doing. Next, you should always bear leadership skills. Do you believe in that? Yes. Always bear leadership skills, whatever it takes. Don't you ever tell me that I am not a leader of an organization. I am not a leader of a team. I am not, I am not handling anything. No, it's not like that. You're a leader. You're always selling every day. Do you believe? Who's selling here every day? Don't you believe that you're always selling every day? Each time that you go to food court, your friend will gonna ask you, where are you going to eat? Oh, I'm going to eat, oh, maybe there. Okay, I'm going to eat there as well. So you sold your idea. You are selling every day. Each one of us selling every day. You're talking to your wife, you're talking to your kid, and your kid believes in you. You're selling your idea. You're giving them knowledge, and then they're acknowledging it. So please. Consider yourself that you're a marketer each day. Next to that, social, what is that? You should have a very good communication skills. If you're a leader, you should be practicing how to talk and how to manage your team. Good communication skill is a key for everything, believe me. Not all designers are good designers. Do you believe in that? But you, may, you should respect their design, because sometimes you may ask, why their design's been approved? But my design's better. But because, you know, they know how to communicate well. They know how to explain their ideas clearly. Public speaking and dealing with other people is one of the key, how are you going to do that? Practice, social etiquette, professionalism. Yes, I do believe, because just to share with, I am also teaching here as, um, as a part-time um, lecturer at Raffles College of Higher Education. And most of our students there, they were foreigners. They are from Indonesia, from Thailand, from China. And most of them, they are very timid. They don't want to speak. They don't want to present. And then the question is why? And then they will tell me, because we are not good in English. And so what? English is not our native tongue, but if you will practice, you will soon to be go along with that kind of words. Just try. They will not persecute you, believe me. How many grammars that I've thrown and it's wrong, but it's okay, because why? I could carry it. They won't persecute you, just try. Lastly, being professional. What is that all about? Interpersonal skills, habits of success, claim it. It's not just claim it, but you should do it. It's always like this. You need to claim that, you need to claim that. You need to take action before claiming it. Am I right? right. You cannot claim anything if you're not doing something. You need to do something, take action more, and then after that, suddenly you will realize that yes, I am able to claim what I got. Presentation skills is also linked on to that, and so on and so forth. Later, if you want to get this um, slide, we can give it to um, James. Next, increase your values. 
Now, I'm going to ask you, what is your value? I would say, oh, I'm earning 5000 But you know what? When you increase your value through education, you can earn more than that. I'm earning 7000 now. It's OK. More education, 30% more value. You should put something, invest something. The word ROI that I heard from our dear James, that's return on investment. You have the tangible and intangible benefits of the ROI. And most especially when you're having this education, the intangible value that we can see is the most valuable thing that education can give you. And after that, it can be equated into the tangible one, which is your salary. So please, those who are still young, Please learn and educate yourself more. Those on our age, don't be shy. Learn more and educate yourself more. Because you know why? The more you gain knowledge, that's the only time that you can share more unto others as well. You cannot gain anything if you don't know how to share it. Share it so that you, have, you still have space for you to gain more. Number six, understand your worth or understand your value, but please also know what is the worth of your value. What is the worth of your value? Example in your company. If you wasn't there and you have this special skill, they will gonna hire someone else or double person to do your job. And how much is that? That is the worth of your value. Simple mathematics. Right? Example, no one there in your company knows how to do Revit, and you can. Be bold. Tell them that I can. And how much is that that they're going to pay for those who knows how to do that? That is the additional value of yours. Be bold. Don't be afraid. I had a situation before that I want to share. That this person's telling me, oh, I want to change my job, and I'll be having an interview. And here in Singapore, there's only 10% or how much percentage that you need to add in the salary, and that is standard. What did I tell that guy? I don't believe that there's certain standard for my price. And that is true. He got the price that he deserves. No such thing as standard. No such thing as 10%, 15% added to your salary. I will fight unto that. That is not I deserve, and that is not my worth. And I can tell that I can equalize the worth that you're going to give me. And now he got the salary that we're asking for because he, well, he became bold. Don't be afraid. They're asking for your they are asking for your what is that payslip from your from your previous company, and they will gonna compute this fifteen percent or twenty percent plus only because that is the standard here in Singapore. I don't believe in that. Sell yourself, market yourself, show them that you can do better, and you deserve more than that. Show them your worth. No one will gonna believe in you if you don't believe first into yourself. Is it true? No one will gonna believe in you if you will not believe first into yourself. You know better. You know yourself better than they do. So prove to them that you deserve more than that. Learn to build your platform. What is that? Be responsible to the do's and don'ts of the social media, right? I've learned a lot from James. I've heard a lot from Jimmy, and that is true. You know what? You, when you're in social media, you don't need to show things that won't inspire many. Make sure that you will be responsible on the things that you are posting because it reflects to your personality. Right? For, uh, um, for our family, we just did it two days ago. We did TikTok. What 
is the TikTok. You may check um, Latios Cool Gamer in YouTube, and you will find those three kids there. They are posting their inspirational videos. Again, Latios Cool Gamer. That's in YouTube. And we call it as TikTok. What is TikTok? Teach, inspire, connect, and talk. You know what they are doing? They are teaching the kids how to be healthy. We already have part one to three of teaching the kids to play basketball. And we are into animation now and we want to research on how to teach the kids who got deficiencies. Their ages, 11, 10, and 8. But the kids can already do that. How much more? When you are in social networking, make sure of that, that you always look at your, check your profile picture. That it says something about you as a person, just like what I heard from James. Don't wear skinny, um, skimpy clothes there when you're doing that. Of course, it's according to what you are portraying for. It depends upon, okay? When you are on professional networking, please read your profile. Remove yourself from who you are and check it according to the outsider's perspective. Judge yourself. Don't judge anyone. Look at yourself first. Because most of the time, what we do is we are already judging people according to what they are posting. But we are not checking what we are posting. Be responsible. In Twitter, of course, showcase your expertise. Do not post anything that won't be relevant or nothing to do with other people, or it will just bring negativeness to the world. And lastly, if you have website or blogs, examine how you are portraying yourself. Be consistent if you are portraying as an architect because you know what in your career this one will build your career as well if you're selling yourself into something or as a designer why are you going to put something else with it, um, outside of your being a designer but if you're focusing on to being an artist and come designer come architect and that is okay but please all professionals what is that? Invest time to share your knowledge. Why we're here. Why I am here. Why we are talking in front of you. Simple. We are sharing. You think that I'm that we're the only one who's gaining knowledge here? No. We're gaining knowledge from you as well. By looking at us, by looking at you, how you project the moment that I throw a word. What are the things that make you comfortable? What are the things that makes you itch? What are the things that makes you uncomfortable? When I am looking at you like this, how many seconds that I can look at into a person that makes him feel uncomfortable? I am learning. That's the same thing. I am learning and I am sharing. Maybe on the next talk like this, maybe one, or two from the audience and able to share as well like this. Aren't you excited about that? Share and learn. Number nine, what is that? Deliver your value consistently. We don't need to hear your talks. Show us. A lot of people these days Talks goes first before their result, and sometimes the result is not equal to their talk. Your action must match those words. You should be responsible on the words that you drop and make sure that you can able to equalize it with your result. Do you believe in that? Because you know why? Professional identity builds your reputation. Whenever you see anyone here outside and make sure that you know who are you sitting with, say hi and hello and look at that person and say, 
How are you? How's your result? So please make that as as your daily in your daily life that refrain from talking so much. You may as long as you already have your result. Okay? And then lastly, this is one of the most important things that you need to learn. And one of the most important things that you don't need to disregard. Your network is your net worth. Do you believe in that? Your network is your net worth. Don't you ever underestimate the value of what we are doing tonight. This is networking, and don't you ever underestimate talking to the person next to you, talking to the person behind you, beside you, and even to the last person there in the room. You never know the opportunity of that person will going to give you. Do you believe in that? You never know. Have you ever talked to her? Have you ever talked to them? Have you ever know what are the names of the people? How many how many attendees do we have tonight? By Tuesday, we have like 90-something RSVP. By today, 100 plus. Okay, so we have 100 plus opportunities in this room. Aren't you excited about that? Yes. Aren't you excited about it? We have 100 plus. We have students here from NUS who's also looking for a job. So if I were you, try to connect with them. If you're looking for a job as well and you're trying to or you want to open up a business, connect with them. That's my takeaway. Number 10, network is your network. And be fearless. Be limitless. You know what? In this world, there will be many who wants to eat, but very few who are willing to hunt. Are you willing to hunt? Are you willing to dive to the opportunity of the unknown? <laughs> Take a risk, because you never know that maybe in that diving board, you can able to get the pink diamond. Thank you and good night.